In this presentation, we will look at simulating multiple dice in the R programming language. So here we're going to look at a few lines of code that is going to simulate the rolling of two dice and then make a histogram for the sum of those two dice. So in line four, we have, we're using the sample function. It has three arguments. First argument are the possible values. So that's one colon six. So we're pulling the, the possible values from one, two, three, four, five, or six. The second argument is how many of them we want, 100. And we are doing replace equals true. So then if we uh, roll the five, then that five becomes available for subsequent rolls. All of that, those 100 values, which may be are randomly selected between one and six, um, are all assigned to a variable called die one. In line five, we do the same thing, but call it die two. So that is the simulating of two dies. In line six, we are adding the two dice to get sum. And remember that die one and die two are vectors. And so we add them and we get another vector. So sum is a vector of values. Uh, line seven just has sum. So the uh, results will be spit out into the console. Table is a way to uh, quickly get the frequencies. So it'll tell us how many times we rolled a two. So the possible values go from two to 12. The, the smallest value of the sum if we roll two ones was a two, the highest if we roll two sixes is a 12. And so the table sum is going to tell us how many times we rolled two, three, four, all the way up to 12. And then in nine, we're going to make a histogram of the sum data. And again, the possible values go from two to 12. Uh, to make the histogram look nice, we're using the second argument of the histogram, the breaks, and we're going from a little bit below the smallest so instead of 2, 1.5, and, and the highest was 12. We go a little bit beyond 12 to 12.5. So we have 1.5 colon 12.5. So here we're seeing the results in the console of two of our statements of the sum and the table of sum. So sum is a vector. It's of length 100, and we're expecting it to have values between 2 and 12. And it so happens that there are no twos that I'm seeing or twelves that I'm seeing. And, and that makes sense that we, we only chose 100, a sample size of 100. And the two and the 12 are the sort of rarest roles. So it's, it's acceptable. You know, it makes sense that we, that we don't happen to see one. The table sum counts the frequencies. So again, it's not showing us two or 12 because they were not rolled, but it's showing us that a three was rolled six times, a four was rolled seven times, a five was rolled 14 times, etc. The We don't see the result of the histogram here because it's going to be over in the plot region. Here's the result of the histogram for the sum of the two dice. And as we said, there were no examples of rolling a two or rolling a 12. So we have no columns for the two or the 12. And uh, it's, it's higher in the middle than toward the end. That's as we expect. Um, 100 is not a lot of samples. So sometimes uh, like the six column is, is lower than the five column. And, and that will happen when you have a, a smaller sample size like 100. Here we are extending the result to three dice. So die one is sample of one to six, 100 replace true. And we do that for die one and die two and die three. And we're summing all the die. So sum is die one plus die two plus die three. So sum, so die were all vectors of length 100. And then we're adding them. So sum is a vector of length 100. Sum in line 17 will just spew out the results down in the console. Table will count our frequencies. So we expect results between uh, the lowest possible value is three and the highest possible value is 18. 
And so table will give us the number of times we rolled a three, the number of times we rolled a four, the number of times we rolled a five. We might not see the three like as happened before with the two dice, then, then it's a, a rarer thing and we're only doing 100 samples. In line 19, we're making the histogram of the sum of the three dice and we're introducing the break column, the break uh, argument to make it look nice. The values range from 3 to 18, and we go a little bit below the 3 with our 2.5. We go a little bit above the 18 with 18.5. Here we're seeing some of those results in the console. So sum was a vector of length 100, and it was the sum of three dice. So we're expecting possible values between 3 and 18. Then when we tabled it, we were counting the frequencies. So we rolled a three one time, we rolled a four two times, we rolled a five one time, we rolled a six two times, etc. cetera. Uh, as you see at the other end, we never happen to roll an 18. And then the histogram will be a uh, over in the plot region. Here's the histogram of the three dice over in the plot region. We see that we never rolled a 16 or an 18. That will happen with a small sample size, but we do see basically the, of what we're expecting, sort of bigger in the middle uh, with some tails on the end. So as you increase the number of dice, you work your way towards a normal distribution peaked in the middle with the tails. Here we are showing the hist function with a few more arguments so we had the usual sum, the thing we're making the histogram of, the breaks, sort of making it divide up into columns nicely the way we want. Then we've added a main, which gave us a title. Uh, we gave an X label. I cut the picture off a little too low to see that. Uh, we put a, a, a Y label, you do see that. And then I made the columns blue. And here we go again one more time, but uh, this time we did four dice, die one, die two, die three, die four. The sum was die one plus die two plus die three plus die four. We upped our sample size to 1000. Uh, we tabled the sum so we should be able to see down in the console, what I haven't shown the console, the, the count of the frequency. And then we made the histogram um, of the sum of the four dice, the breaks went from, the, the possibilities go from 4 to 24, so we went a little bit less than 4, 3.5, a little bit more than 24, 24.5. We put in a title, we put in a, an X label, this time I show it, uh, we put in a Y label, and I made the color green.